I hope you guys have your seat belts fastened because it is going to be one hell of a summer, ladies and gentlemen. And we're not even there yet. But massive protests are already starting. People are already fighting at the amusement parks and the zombies. Oh, the zombies are about to be unleashed. Now, I'm just joking about the last part. Although I do have a very interesting story to bring to you all from Las Vegas. So Sunday at around 5 a.m., the police got a phone call that two men were fighting at the bus stop. Now, with everything going on in Vegas, this was very low on the list of priorities for the cops that were on duty at the time. So guess what? The cops didn't even show up. Then about 45 minutes later, the police get another phone call. This time, the person on the other end of the phone says, hey, someone is eating someone at the bus stop. Yeah, you heard me right, someone is literally eating another person at the bus stop. So after hearing this, the police were like, okay, I guess that fight was a little more seriously, or a little more serious than we thought. So the police show up, they see a man lying on the ground, and then there's another man kneeled over him. They pull out their guns, they yell, the man kneeling over the other man on the ground, he turns around. And the guy's face is covered with the other guy's face. Pieces of the other guy's face are all scattered throughout this dude's beard. And no kidding, he's munching on an eyeball as the police show up. Now, as crazy as all of that sounds, here's what the local news had to say about the situation. Now, as you watch this clip, you let me know if you notice anything wrong, and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. Metro Police investigating an early morning homicide downtown. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm Sasha Loftus. Sources tell the 8 News Now investigators about a situation near 3rd and Charleston. That's what we find 8 News Now investigator Kyle Payne with the latest. Kyle. Sasha, all's quiet here in this section of downtown. And again, the information we're able to report at this hour comes from our sources. But if you roll the video from this morning, the Crime Scene Investigation Mobile Command Center had this entire street blocked off for hours. Sources say police responded to a call around 6 a.m. You can see plainclothes police personnel and officers in uniform swarming the area. Later this afternoon, when we got here, even though it was much quieter, you can see crumbled up police tape and the remnants of this crime scene, as well as plastic gloves in the trash can closest to the bus stop, where witnesses say this situation eventually concluded. Witnesses and neighbors were either tight-lipped or saw very little. The one neighbor we spoke with didn't seem phased with well-documented issues of homelessness and drugs. I would say drugs. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. Most of the people that I see down here that are homeless or, or down and out or whatever, you know, they're either on drugs or, you know, whatever. I mean, there's plenty of places to get help down here. We spoke with people inside this 7-Eleven and a nearby AM PM, all of whom seem to know some gory details of what happened here this morning, but nothing we can confirm just yet beyond what our sources tell us. We do know, according to sources, these rows were closed until about 12.30 this afternoon. We are awaiting more information from police, hopelessly on the identity of a victim and perhaps a suspect. And as that information comes in, we'll keep you updated. Notice how they kind of ignore the elephant in the room there? You got a whole new segment about something happening, but you leave out the part about eating faces? If someone is eating faces in my neighborhood, by golly, I want to know about it, okay? What? You're in my hood eating faces? Oh, hell no. Nah. I need to know. I need to know. 
But, you know, that's what the news outlets do. You can't depend on them for anything. Oh, yeah, there, someone got killed at the bus stop. Let's forget to mention that half of his face was um, missing because the other guy ate his ears and his eyeballs out of his face. Whew. But we haven't even hit summer yet. We haven't even hit summer yet, and this is what we're dealing with. But if you want to know the actual details about what transpired, let me read to you all what actually went down. This is what they left out in the news. A man allegedly unalived another man at a bus stop near the Las Vegas Strip, eating his victim's face in the process, according to documents... Colin Zeck, age 29, faces a charge of open murder. Just before 5 a.m. Sunday, a person called the police about a man who reportedly tackled another man to the ground on Las Vegas Boulevard near Charleston Boulevard, documents say. About 45 minutes later, another person called the police saying a man was on top of another man at a bus stop eating the other man's face. Officers then quickly responded, finding Zek kneeling next to the victim with biological matter in his hair, mouth, and on his clothing. Zek reportedly told officers the victim had attacked him. Paramedics transported the victim, identified as Kenneth Brown, to the hospital where a doctor pronounced him deceased. Brown had a large cut to part of his head and was missing an eye and ears, according to documents. While in custody, Zek was going in and out of consciousness. He later told officers that he is homeless and was awake for five days straight because something was possessing him. Zek also told detectives he used teeth to hurt the victim. He used his teeth to eat the man's eyeballs and ears. Oh. <laughs> I mean, what is there to say, folks? What is there to say? I, it, it, it's almost leaving me speechless. I usually have something to say in a situation like this one. But the dude's just out here eating faces. The news is out here trying to not tell people that people are getting their face eaten. Meanwhile, this guy claims he's possessed. He's up for five days straight. He's probably possessed for real, not by a demon, probably by some type of, um, you know, substances that have kept him up this long. But when we talk about zombies, <laughs> let's go back to the zombies I mentioned earlier. It really feels like in some places, in some areas... It really feels like The Walking Dead is already here. You know what I mean? Like, they're not the... Well, I was about to say they're not the brain-eating zombies that we see in movies, but they're eating faces. But there's, like, drugged-out zombies. You know what I mean? Especially in these big cities, these inner cities. You can go... If I wouldn't suggest that you travel to these areas... But you can go on like live streams on YouTube. People just walk through these neighborhoods in Philly and various places throughout America where the streets are just riddled with the walking dead. Basically, drugged out zombies. It's really freaking scary. And the situation is getting worse and worse and worse. And it seems like every few years there's a new substance introduced that's even deadlier and makes people act even crazier than the last substance. And, you know, a lot of this stuff, it, it's been, uh, a, a lot of people don't want to believe it, but a lot of the fentanyl stuff that's entering and coming into America, it's coming from the southern border through Mexico, but it's being funded by China. China's behind a lot of the substances that are coming across our border. Everyone wants to blame you know, the cartel and stuff. And I'm not saying that they don't play a role, but the fentanyl crisis, you can't blame just the cartels for that. China has their hands and their little fingers all over this stuff. But as far as, you know, people getting their face eaten at the bus stop, all I can say is, folks, you got, you got to be careful out here. 
And I'm not trying to scare anyone. We all live in the same world, hopefully in the same reality. You know, we're not Britney Spears. We're here in the real world. So we know how crazy the real, the, the real world has gotten. So you have to be alert out here. I wouldn't put anything past anyone. Um, I've gotten to the point where I don't like, it seems like these days on every intersection, there's someone like asking for money, walking up to your car with signs, walking up to your car, wanting to ask you questions. I, I, I just ride past, I don't even roll down the windows anymore. And it's not because I feel like a jerk when I do it, but it's not because I'm a jerk. It's because you never know what's going through people's minds these days. You know what I'm saying? So I just try to separate myself from any type of situation. The best, the best defense is a good offense in many ways, or you could reverse it. But, you know, trying to separate yourself from situations where you know something could go wrong or trying to even separate yourself from situations that aren't necessary I think that's the safest thing to do right now in today's day and age. Maybe things will calm down. Maybe society will balance itself out a little bit, hopefully one day. But as of right now, it seems like people are extremely irrational. They've gotten even more irrational over the past few years since the lockdowns. And, you know, I just, you got to walk around these streets prepared for someone to try to eat your face. Let's just put it like that. That's the best way to put it. When you walk out the door, understand that there's someone in your city that might eat your face. So be ready. Be prepared. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't don't put yourself in these situations with, you know, people who you don't even need to be around. And, you know, just try to live your life in, in the best way you can. Try to keep your face intact out here, people. I'm worried about you all. I am because, you know... I'm worried about myself as well, but I feel as if I've learned how to navigate through some of this stuff. But then again, wrong place, wrong time happens to anyone. But I, I've noticed that a lot of people, they're still traversing this world. They're still traveling through life, traveling through society as if we were living in like, you know, 10 years ago. And things have changed, you know, drastically. And a lot of people are still catching up to that. And because they're still catching up to these changes, they're getting caught slipping. They're becoming victims. But enough of that. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. And I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.